Okay, so I made a video a couple weeks ago going into how um, my flash mod adventure um, that I had planned for the monochrome iPod I have here did not go quite as smoothly as I wanted it to. In fact, it took a month to finally finish the project. And I've got this iPod photo now, which has 64 gigs in it. Now, um, now going into, like, um, um, now going into the whole flash mod, um, I want to say that, um, I didn't expect it to take as long as I wanted it to take. I want, I was hoping it was going to take a week and then I was going to get the video done. But, um, let me go into the flash mod now, um... I want to say that I've got both iPods. This was the one that died for me. And let's talk about this guy. So let's get into the first bit, which is how's my experience been with this iPod. Now, um, this originally came with 20 gigs. Um, I bought this refurbished from the from Elite Obsolete Electronics. Great business, by the way. I made a separate video on that. But um, um, I upgraded this with 64 gigs uh, from an, with an iFlash ADA. I did thought I did I was gonna flash mod it with one of those cheap um, compact flash to IDE adapters, but. I um I exchanged it for an iFlash add up a couple weeks before the um when uh the whole flash mod project wasn't working but um going into my experience I think if anything it's great. I um I did 64 gigs in this guy. I've got a 5000 song library which is mostly AACs from CDs in the iTunes library but I think if anything, it's great. I love the iPod. The flash mod helps a lot. I've had one issue, but it wasn't that big of an issue. It was just that the hard drive cable just got disconnected from a hard drop. But besides that, it was pretty good. The I love having it so fast, and the fact is, is that it's just so nice to be able to carry around almost my entire music library with me, or technically my entire music library. But um, talking about... Um, like how much it costed me to get the whole flash mod thing to work. It costed around like seventy dollars for me to get this whole flash mod project done because I had to buy an iPod. Um, I had to buy an iPod. I had to buy the flash kit, an SD card, and that was it. I it was seventy dollars for the whole thing. Now, now going into a quick little thing, which is gonna be. Um, should you flash mod and why? Now, now, yes, you should flash mod your iPod. Now, the only ones that don't work are the first and second gens, mainly because they're more reliant on FireWire. They entirely depend on FireWire, basically. You could do it for a third gen, and I should have grabbed my third gen, but I'm just going to roll with it. Um, but it semi relies on FireWire. But um, now, why would you rely on um, flash modding anyway? Well, because of the... Well, reliability, along with it being so much lighter, but also battery life is saved. Now, I would go on and on and on, but I want this video to be a little bit shorter. I don't want it to be too long. So, I want to say that my experience is great. Should you flash mod? Yes. Now, if you do have any issues, uh, please go to um, Elite Obsolete Electronics or ask um, anybody or dang pods about issues. Why did I say that? I'll probably cut that out, but if I don't, then, hey, that's something. But I want to say, yes, you should flash mod. I do love this iPod. I really do hope that this is my main iPod for my for the rest of my life. I'll only have to replace the battery a few times. But thank you, guys. I wanted to make this short little video to just kind of give my own um, opinion about flash mod and stuff. Um, benefits, battery life is better. It's way lighter. The reliability increases by a long shot. So, I'll see you guys later with another video in a couple of days. Bye. Back that ass up. Oh, 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 yep.